Lying is not only saying what isn't true, it's also saying more than is true. And by lying, let's be honest, what do we mean by lying, let's be honest? What do we mean by lying? What is, what is it to tell a lie? If we're being honest about what it is to tell a lie. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah. And what's the purpose of the lie? To persuade the other person that it's not you or something. To persuade something, yeah. So we're lying for the purpose, as we're telling something that's, that's not true, and that can be either by, by omitting stuff that's not, you know, that, that, you know, omitting information, or by giving information. Yeah. It's like, you know, a relationship when someone says, oh, it's not you, it's me, you're definitely lying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not you, it's me. Yeah. It's not right. <laughs> Is that what you tell them? No. Oh, no, you tell them, yeah, it's you. It really isn't me. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> But you've got some work to do on yourself. Yeah, so in that kind of a case there, that's saying something that just plain isn't true. You really do think it's them. And in some cases, like if I were to ask you, like, oh, what'd you do yesterday? And you're like, oh, I went to the mall. And anything else? No. But you did go other places. And it isn't that you didn't think it was important. It's just that you didn't want the other person to know. So that's by, you know, lying by omitting information, not saying things. So we can think of a lie as anything that we're saying that's designed to mislead a person. You know, to persuade them of something that, is, that isn't true. Um, to, get, to get something out of them. Like we'll lie to people because we want to get something out of them. Uh, we'll lie to people because we want to avoid an argument. Or we'll lie to a person because we just don't want them to be upset. And so we'll frame it like kind of altruistically. Like, well, it's because I want you, I'm worried about you. I don't want you to be mad. Um, does this dress make me look fat? Yeah. Oh, no. No. It's not the dress. Oh. <laughs> the dress is beautiful. <laughs> but, but we need to talk. It's not you. It's me. Um, <laughs> I have, yes. Oh, of course you have. Why not? Would you rather, I mean... Listen, I'm sure you've got friends who will lie to you, right? And you know who they are. And you have friends who will tell you the truth? Yes. Okay, I hope so. A, a, a true friend will stab you in the front. So, yeah, if you ask them, if you ask them a question, that's, I mean, you, you, you should have those people in your life who you know you can go to. Um, for myself, I don't keep people around me who will lie to me. I'll keep people around me who will just listen and go, uh-huh, and listen. And then you have some people who are around you who tell you the truth. Hopefully you don't have people who are going to lie to you. You know, they're going to lie to you, you have no idea what they're going to lie to you about. We had this idea that, like, if you have a friend who lies to somebody else, you know, well, at least they're honest with me. Don't you think that other person thinks the same thing? That they're honest to them? You have no idea if they're, if they're honest to you or not. Well, I never caught them in a lie. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's kind of like, um, if you meet somebody who, who, um, I don't know, cheats on something, not necessarily a person, but, a, a, you know, a task or whatever, well, you know you're dealing with a person who is okay with, with cutting corners and cheating. And then you shouldn't be surprised if that person then somehow cheats you or cut corners on, you know, cuts corners on you in some way. And, you know, we, I'm, I'm not saying the person's a terrible person, but you understand what I'm saying. I think you probably understand that that's true. And, and if you're that person who will, who will lie in certain circumstances, like, well, it's, it's for you. You know, it's not for myself, it's because I want to, and I want you to be unhappy or uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm going to lie to you just to, to make you feel better. But it's really for yourself, because you realize that if you have a, a friend who asks you that, that question, you know, or a significant other who asks you that question, do, do I, does this dress make me look fat? If you tell the truth, it's, it very well could harm your relationship. But that's because that person's putting that on you. Like, they're putting that responsibility to compromise yourself on you. I mean, they're the ones putting that in that terrible position. Shouldn't they instead just not ask? They really don't want to know the truth. Or shouldn't they say something like, hey, tell me I look beautiful in this dress. Okay. You know? But when a person now creates an obligation for you to lie, an obligation, of course you don't have an obligation to lie ever, but they're creating, you know, they're creating this obligation for you to lie, as a, and, and they're dumping that onto you. They're making you a worse person, I guess I would say. You know? It's kind of like you catch a little kid <coughs> sorry, um, stealing a cookie, and they've got the cookie in their hand, they've got chocolate on their face, and you ask them, did you steal a cookie? 
you could think of it as I'm giving them an opportunity to tell the truth. Hopefully. But are you really? Or are you setting them up to lie? You know? It's like you're... Um, We, we, we do need to talk. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it, it, it is you. But, yeah, this is a... But, you know, you find yourself in these situations where sometimes you might feel like you have, to, you have to, to lie to cover yourself for something you didn't actually do wrong. You know? Just because you want to protect that other person, you think. Mm -hmm. But it's a dangerous game, man. Because, you guys ever played Jenga before? Yes. 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 And you ever, <clears throat> have you ever lost Jenga before? Yeah. Yes. How did you lose? No. No. Because <laughs> you pulled one of the things out and you didn't think the thing was going to collapse. But, kind of, no. you know, not telling the truth is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, trying to engineer a lot of things in life are like that. If I can get this person to do this and this person to do that, and there's like this scheming and these mechanisms that go on. If, if you just tell the truth, are things going to go well for you? Yes. Yes. How, I mean, the truth is the very thing that sets you free. How can the truth lead you badly? The truth will put you in situations you don't like. That's absolutely true. But we're not here on this planet to be, to, to, to be happy with, with the way that things go. You know, there's a really good way. I mean, there's a really good way of not getting in trouble from lying. And that is, don't do things that, that you have to lie about. And then if you do find yourself lying about those things, understand that now you're creating a web, and in a really strong sense, you're making yourself weaker. When you lie, you make yourself weak. And I won't ask for hands, I won't ask for examples, but you all probably have something that you've done, that you've lied about, we all have, that at any minute, the whole thing could come unraveled if someone discovers the truth. You know, whether it's where you were last weekend, whether it's, you know, um, you know if you're in classes or not, or, you know, whatever it is. And that means that you have to go through life, not, I mean, I guess at the, at the mercy of, it, of someone to not expose you, or at least at the mercy of fate to not expose you, you know? It's kind of like I was saying earlier, like, um, you know, when, when, you, when someone sends me that message, um, well, uh, you know, we need to talk, and you said the terrible message to get, and then I said, you start psyching through your head, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Well, what if you haven't done anything? You know? By the way, just because you haven't done anything doesn't mean you won't have that thing going on. Like, that's with, with me. Um, I just have like, a hang-up about that. Like, oh, I must have done something. I must have done something. But if you haven't done anything wrong, then of course there's nothing to get caught up on. And so, you know, what, what bad can come from that? Well, someone can get mad anyway. Yeah, but, okay, but don't let them make you a liar. You know? Don't let somebody else make you into something that you're not. I mean, unless you are that thing. And if, the, and if the truth is something that's going to, to cause people in your life to go away, I guess you have to ask yourself, do you want to be in a situation where you have to lie to keep that person in your life? Do you want your relationship with that person to be based off of your willingness to be deceitful? Because if so, then that means that you're, 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 you're hanging out with somebody who's making you a worse person. In fact, your whole relationship is predicated on the idea of being a worse person. And if it's true that we should be pursuing a life of being a better person, then maybe we should jettison those, those people from our lives who, whose relationships are based off of that idea of me being worse, me being worse, or even them being worse. If you expect people to stand your life by telling you lies. Yeah. So there, I mean, when he says that we do it all every day to make life simpler, you can, you've nailed a few of them already. You know, telling someone that you love them when you really don't. Um. Telling, telling someone that, you know, they're, that they're... Um, you know, that, uh, you know, they look great when they don't. Um, telling people in the morning, how are you? Oh, I'm great, man. And when you're really not. And you might say, well, because I don't want to go around and like, tell everybody how I'm doing. I, I understand that. And that's, I, I get that. But that's your balance there. Like, they put you in this position now of having to tell the truth. And there's something admirable about people who tell the truth. There's also something frustrating about people who tell the truth. They're, they're difficult to be around, but aren't liars difficult to be around also? You know, it might be the case that it's just that people are difficult to be around. And so you get to choose who you're going to surround yourself with. You know, again, life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer. You get to choose what you're going to suffer for.
Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you guys ask me how I'm doing, I give a couple of different answers. What are some of the answers I give? Every day is Christmas. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't even know. <laughs> I just put up with it. Like Christmas, yeah. I hate Christmas. <laughs> so, so for all you know, I could be telling you every day is worse than yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Which means that any day you find me is the worst day of my life. <laughs> or... But when you saw him every day, he'd say, every day is Christmas. Every day is Christmas. And by the way, good heart on this dude, man. Um, there's, a, there's a custodian. I haven't seen him here in a while. He's not like a, he's not on campus. He cuts the trees and things around campus. He goes around the district. Is he like, like skinny? What's that? Is he skinny? Mm, uh, he's skinny. He's usually wearing like a, a flannel. He's about CA tall. He's got some very serious looking glasses. <laughs> he's, he's, a big, he's a very serious man. And I was talking to him one day. He came, I was out there working in the field after Andy died, and um, he, and he came over and he's like, you know, I was talking. I, I knew him before, you know, and he was telling me about Andy. And he says, Andy, good man. <laughs> I was like, damn right, he's good man. <laughs> and he goes on to tell me about how like he cuts the trees around campus, and he's not supposed to start until I think it's like 7 a.m. or whatever. But he's telling me he gets here an hour early, and he doesn't get paid for that. He gets here an hour early to cut the trees because it's easier to cut the trees when there aren't the people around. And besides, if he wants to do a good job, it's going to take him more time than they're willing to pay him for. Yeah, an interesting guy. I'm like, so you get here for that? He says, yes. He says, I, he says, I do not cut the trees. What the prince, man. I cut the trees for my God. Ooh. Ooh. This guy's on a mission from God to cut trees. <laughs> but that's how seriously he took it. For him, it was you tell that you know you, you do the best job that you can, not just because you're paid for it, not just because your boss expects it of you, but because it's a reflection of you. And he saw himself as a very religious man. He sees himself as a reflection of his God. And he felt that if he if he was doing a, a bad job, which I, I imagine probably extends to every area of his life, if he's a liar, then he feels that that reflects on his God. He's lazy, he thinks it reflects on his God. And he wants to live a life such that it glorifies his God. It's an interesting take. It isn't the, the normal, hey, do what you want Friday and Saturday, and then go pretend to, to, to repent on Sundays. And so, he tells me a story about Andy, where one day he was out there, and Andy yelled at him, hey, what, you know, what time is it? And, he, and the guy didn't have a watch. And he says, I don't have a watch. And he's like, you don't have a watch? That's how Andy used to do it. He'd get so excited. Like, <laughs> Wait right there! And the guy disappears into the clubhouse in the baseball field and he emerges and he, and he has a watch. And he gives the guy his watch. So you need a watch because you have to know what time it is. You know, you're a custodian. You're, you're running on clocks. clock. You have to know what time it is. And so he says, this is the watch and he gave It was a Rolex. Oh! Whoa. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, Andy's wife was very wealthy. So Andy was very wealthy. Well, I mean, he made, he made a lot of money anyway as the tennis court, as the internet, that's the, the, uh, the uh, learning center uh, coordinator. But, you know, his wife was also very wealthy. Um, his wife's family, um, what was it, neutral, neutral life, was it? They invented one of those, uh, no, um, oh, what was it, it was a diet pill that, then they got sued for it. <laughs> oh, herbal life, no, something like that. It was one of them, they, his, her family owned that, 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 that pill company. That sounds terrible. That dietary supplement company. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, Andy just gave him his, his Rolex. And those are the kind of stories you hear about Andy. Andy, like I said, he was a, he's a shorter guy, but if you know football, you know football, and you know what this means. He, he held the CIF touchdown record until Reggie Bush broke it. If you know who Reggie Bush is, then you know who Reggie Bush is. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, Andy Sanchez was drafted to play professional baseball, but he didn't go play because he wanted to play college, he wanted, he wanted to play football, and he wanted to prove that he was bitten and he could play football. So he went to, you know, so he, he pursued a professional career in the Canadian Leagues, hoping it would lead him into the NFL. And then the Canadian Leagues uh, folded, there was no more Canadian League, so that, that was the end of his dream. And so after that, Andy came back to San Diego, um, started working as a bartender, 
and he really took his work home with him, as it were. And so it was something he had struggled with for a good portion of his life. He would finally gotten rid of it when he got married. And then in uh, the recent months leading up to that, he was having problems with his wife. She was leaving him. And he went back to the alcohol. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the true story. Now, we could tell the other story. God needed another angel. Um, he fell off of his balcony. But you notice that there's nothing instructive about that. There is something instructive about telling the truth. It's like it destroys his memory. Yeah, it makes him human. You know? And, and hopefully when we make our heroes human, because he was a hero to a lot of people, hopefully when we make our, our heroes human, it isn't because then we can pull them down. It's so that we can see them and say, they were flawed, and therefore I have the opportunity to aspire to greatness as well. Because remember, like, like when Franco talks about guilt, and he says that, that you know, guilt can stop us from doing the things that we, we should be doing, Seeing someone who's perfect can stop us from, from pursuing things as well because we think, I'm so deeply flawed, I could never possibly do what they are doing. You know? Like I was thinking about, um, there's a, a band I like a lot called Jane's Addiction. And when I was uh, living alive as a musician, I remember listening to Jane's Addiction just thinking like, crap, I could never do what Jane's Addiction did. You know? And so I thought I should stop playing music. You, know? you don't want to have heroes like that who, who influence you that way. And then there was this another band I like a lot called, like, and this is months later, I was listening to another band I like a lot called The Smiths. They're my favorite band. And The Smiths and Jane's, Jane's Addiction are so completely different in every, in every approach, but they're both great. And you look at them and you go, well, there's room for greatness in between there somewhere. You know? When you look at your heroes, don't let, them, don't let them dissuade you from becoming what you could be. But instead look at them and say, they're great despite these flaws. And so... Don't celebrate their flaws. See their flaws as an opportunity to learn. You know, uh, what can you learn from Andy Sanchez? So be careful, with, you know, with alcohol. Be careful with depression. Be careful if you put all of your all of your life's ambitions and all of your life goals and dreams into one thing, because you can run for a long time, man. But eventually, those things catch up with you. You don't deal with them. You know, Andy struggled with those demons his whole life, and they didn't get him at 20. But they did get him at 57, I think he was, something like that. You know? you know, these things that just like a lie, it makes you vulnerable, it makes you weak, because it has a chance to come back to you at any moment. You know? If you have those kinds of things going on in your life, you've got to, you've got to wrestle with them and, and defeat them now, or as soon as possible anyway. They're not going to go away. They're just going to sit there and wait for you to, to, to be vulnerable and pop back up. Questions? Comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. Right. That may end up being a highly edited video. <laughs>